Hello and welcome to the world of astronomy. Have you ever heard of sun or noticed a ball of fire which rises daily in the east and sets in the west? Or have you ever observed our elders who worship the sun as a deity? The sun, the heart of our solar system, is a yellow dwarf star, a hot ball of glowing gases. It is not exactly a yellow dwarf star just because its spectrum is towards white. Its gravity holds the solar system together, keeping everything from the biggest planet to the smallest particles of debris in its orbit. Electric currents in the sun generate a magnetic field that is carried out through a solar system by the solar wind, a stream of electrically charged gases blowing outward from the sun in all directions. The connection and interactions between the sun and the earth drive seasons, weather, oceanic currents, photosynthesis and most important thing is here life on the earth. A hot ball of glowing gases at the heart of our solar system. Its gravity holds together everything. The sun has many names in many cultures. The Latin word for sun is sol, that we study solar system, solar year, solar day. If we talk about the size and distance from the earth, with a radius of about 432,168.6 miles, which is approximately 695,508 kilometers. Our sun is not an especially large star. Many are several times bigger, but it is still for more massive than our home planet, Earth. The sun's volume would need 1.3 million Earth to fill it. The sun is 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers from the sun. It's the nearest stellar neighbor in our solar system. It is the nearest star. If you talk about the orbit and rotation of the sun, the sun and everything that orbits it is located in the Milky Way galaxy. More specifically, our sun is in a spiral arm called the Orient Spur that extends outwards from the Sagittarius arm. From there, the sun orbits the center of the Milky Way galaxy, bringing the planets, asteroids, comets and other objects along with it. Our solar system is moving with an average velocity of 450,000 miles per hour. But even at this speed, it takes us about 230 million years to make one complete orbit around the Milky Way. So in our earlier classes, when we used to be in high schools, we were taught that the sun is stationary and the earth is moving around it and all the other planets are moving around the sun. Same thing was given by Copernicus. Before him as Ptolemy told that the earth is the center geocentric theory in which earth is the center and all the stars and the sun and the planets and moon are revolving around it. But Copernicus gave his intuition, his intelligence and some of his astronomical observations that the sun is stationary with relation to the Earth and other planets including Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. The six which were discovered by that time are revolving around the sun. Further studies discovered that the sun itself is not stationary. 
the sun is revolving around the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, which is itself a cluster of billions of stars. The sun rotates as it orbits the center of the Milky Way. It spins, has an axial tilt of 7.25 degrees with respect to the plane of the planet's orbit. Since the sun is not a solid body, different parts of the sun rotate at different rates. At the equator, sun spins around once about every 25 days. But at its poles, the sun rotates once on its axis every 36 days, if we compare with the Earth. If we talk about the formation of the sun, it is also the same way the other stars are formed. The sun and the rest of the solar system was formed from a giant rotating cloud of gas and dust called the solar nebulae about 4.5 billion years ago. As the nebula collapsed because of its overwhelming galaxy and gravity, it spun faster and flattened into a disk. Most of the material was pulled towards the center to form our sun, which accounts for 99.8% of the mass of the entire system. Rest is occupied by the planets, asteroids, comets and other particles mostly by the Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. Like all stars, Sun will someday run out of energy. When the Sun starts to die, it will swell so big that it will engulf Mercury and Venus, and maybe even Earth. Scientists predict that the Sun is a little less than halfway through its lifetime and will last another 6.5 billion years before it shrinks down to a white dwarf. The sun like other stars is a ball of gas. It is made up of 91% hydrogen and 8.9% helium. If you talk about its mass, the Sun is about 70.6% of hydrogen and 27.4% of helium and rest are the other elements which are heavier formed afterwards. The Sun's enormous mass is held together by gravitational attraction producing immense pressure and temperature at its core. The Sun has six regions, the core, the radiative zone and the convective zone in the interior. The visible surface called the photosphere, the cro chromosphere and the outermost region, the corona. At the core, the temperature is about 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, which is sufficient to sustain thermonuclear fusion. This is a process in which atoms combine to form larger atoms and in the process release, release a staggering amount of energy. Sufficiently in the sun's core, hydrogen gets fused to form helium. The energy produced in the sun's core powers the sun and produces all the heat and light that the sun emits. Energy from the core is carried outward by radiation which bounces around the radiative zone taking about 170,000 years to get from the core to the top of the convective zone. The temperature drops below 3.5 million degrees Fahrenheit in the convective zone with large bubbles of hot plasma move upwards. The surface of the sun, the part we can see is about 10,000 degree Fahrenheit or 5,800 degrees Celsius that's much cooler than the blazing core but it's still hot enough to make carbon like diamond and graphite not just melt but boil. So what we see the photons or the light which comes from the Sun takes approximately 8 minutes and 20 seconds 
which is not coming just right after forming. The light we receive today was formed about 170,000 years ago. Isn't it interesting? If you talk about the surface of the sun, the surface of the sun, the photosphere, is a 300 mile thick region from which most of the sun's radiation escapes outward. And this is not a solid surface like the surface of planets. Instead, it is the outer layer of gassy star. We see radiation from the photosphere as sunlight when it reaches about 8 minutes after it leaves the sun. The temperature of the photosphere is about 10,000 degrees per night. This is all about sun. Please comment, share, subscribe and click on the like. Have a good day. Bye-bye.